What is up, you guys? I'm Taxaurus. I am bored as shit, as you can probably tell. So I thought we can pass some time and build another gaming PC. It is one day before New Year's Eve here at the Taxaurus residence, and things are kind of quiet as I'm still waiting for parts to arrive for my ultimate dream setup, and even some parts for my ultimate dream PC. Uh, so I thought we can kill some time and build inside the new Lian Li Dynamic O11 Evo. So Li Li took their super popular best-selling case and they made it better. How you might ask? Well, you can now do an inverted build inside here and you have way more options of mounting your GPU the way you want, which also includes a vertical mount over here on the side, which kind of looks bizarre on pictures to be honest. I don't know if I'll give it a shot, but yeah, it's pretty cool that they're giving you some more options of mounting your graphics card. There were some other aesthetic changes from the case, like moving the USB ports all the way on the bottom, which in my opinion looks the cleanest. But the cool thing about this, you guys, is that you can actually decide where you want to put this on the case. There are three other locations where you can move this. I don't know exactly what configuration I'm going to go with just yet, how I'm going to mount the GPU or where I'm going to move the USB ports and stuff. I'm literally just winging this from start to finish, but I do know one thing. Since they sent me the white version of the case and I do have mostly all black parts, I thought we can do a really nice contrasty black on white build. On paper, it sounds amazing, but we'll see how it looks at the end. So I'm not gonna go over the parts for the sake of time. I'm just gonna mention them as I'm actually doing the build. So I guess we can start off with the CPU. So with this build, we'll be going with the new Intel CPUs. I've been really impressed with their performance. So I'm also gonna try and use the latest parts for all my builds moving forward. And because we're building in arguably one of the best cases in the market, it only makes sense to go with the best CPU, which is currently the 12900K. This is the second 12900K that was sent to me from the unboxing video. So when it comes time for my personal rig, I will have to purchase a third one because I'll be using the same exact CPU in big red version four. Now the motherboard I'll be going with is the MSI Meg Z690 Unify. I've got this inside the last massive unboxing video along with a bunch of other parts which I'll be using in the build as well. But honestly, I couldn't have picked a better board to use inside this build. Check this thing out. I just love the matte black finish on this board, guys. Check this out. Look how clean this board looks. I think it's gonna look incredible once everything is done. And honestly, I'm even thinking about just ditching the RGB lighting altogether. Just go with straight matte black, get that nice stealthy look against the white. I think it'll look incredible, but we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. So this is a DDR5 motherboard, so I will be going with DDR5 memory. Uh, HyperX was kind enough to send in their brand new Fury kit. Unfortunately, I have no idea what the uh, frequency is because it's not even listed on here, but we are going with a uh, 32 gigabyte kit. I think these are 5200 megahertz if I'm reading the numbers correctly, but we will confirm this once the build is put together, of course. I wish I had four sticks just so I can populate all four of the dim slots, but you know, I will take what I can get. This will give me some room to add in another 32 gigabyte kit for a total of 64 later down the line if I ever decide that. So there is room for expandability. So the Z690 Unify from MSI actually supports up to five M.2 SSDs, which is absolutely nuts. But you guys know me, I never really use more than one M.2 SSD slot because there's just no need, especially if I'm going with high capacity storage devices. But check this out, guys. I'm going with MSI's new Spadium, Spatium? Spatium M480 M.2 SSD. This is PCI Gen 4. So we're getting some ridiculous speeds, 7,000 megabytes per second read. That is absolutely nuts. It looks like MSI is also doing these self-lock levers. That is so cool, man. This is, you don't even need any more tools to install your drives. I love it. Look at that. How freaking cool is that? As a PC builder, I really look forward to these little things. It just makes my job so much easier.
All right, so I guess we should figure out now which direction we're gonna be going with the build. So this will pop in right over here. That looks really good against the white, I am not gonna lie. I'm pretty excited to see how this is gonna turn out. But the real question here is, should I go with the upright GPU configuration or not? I do love trying new things, obviously, but at the end of the day, it's gotta look good, right? It's gotta be a tech source build. So we do have the actual kit here. Lee and Lee was kind enough to send over the GPU kits. Um, obviously, if we do go with that route, it's gonna block off this entire portion here, which means I won't be able to mount the radiator or triple 120 millimeter fan. So we're gonna have to put that somewhere else, probably on the bottom or the top. Those are the only other locations. Screw it, let's go with the upright kit. Let's spice it up, why not? The next question is, are we keeping the front side panel or are we going with the mesh panel? Aesthetics or performance? That's really what it comes down to, right? Is this a performance build or is it an aesthetics build? That's a tough question. I mean, honestly, they both look good, but I do, I would like the extra airflow. Ah, these decisions, decisions. I don't know, what would you guys do? Honestly, I'm really curious. If this was your build, what would you do? Would you go with the mesh panel? You know what, let's, let's flip a coin. This is literally the one time I can decide. Here's the coin thing I found on Google. If it's heads, we're sticking with the clear side panel. If it's tails, we're going with the mesh. What do we got? Tails it is, so we're going with the mesh. All right, it has been decided. So one of the big benefits of going with the mesh panel, other than getting you know, improved airflow inside your case, you also have the option of mounting additional fans because we get to install these fan brackets. So this one you can adjust. You can keep it over here in the first slot to install 120 millimeter fans, or you can put it over on the second slot and install 140 millimeter fans. So either two 140s or three 120s is the configuration, so. We'll go with the, uh, with the 120 fan configuration. So basically the fan goes in from the back and then you would screw it in from the front here. There's 120, 240, 360 on the bottom. With this type of configuration, you can actually add more fans. So let's say if we do three intake on the front, three more intake on the bottom and then four exhaust that's gonna really, really improve the airflow and thermals inside the case. All right. All right guys, so I thought about it a little bit and I'm having second doubts of going with the upright GPU configuration. I feel like I'm gonna run into some clearance issues, but in order to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and take this out of the box so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. MSI was kind enough to send in the Ventus 3X RTX 3080 for the build. It is brand new and sealed too, so let's take out this bad boy. This is actually not a wide card. It's kind of thick, but in terms of the actual width of it, it's fairly thin compared to the other cards. All right, so if I mount the card, by the way, it goes in this way. So the IO ports are near the top. If I mount it over here, we might run into some clearance issues from the top, meaning I won't be able to mount my AIO and um, that might complicate some things. I don't want to put the AIO in the front and I certainly don't want to put it on the bottom. So I don't know. I just feel like it doesn't make any sense going with the upright configuration for an air cooled build. I feel like this case is designed for high end water cooling, mid range to high end water cooling. It's got so many nice features in here that I just, I'm not taking advantage of. It, it's almost a shame to do an air cooled build in here. You know what? <sighs> 
let's just go with it. Let's just go with it and see what happens. If I do run into some clearance issues, we'll change it up, but at least I give it a shot. This is pretty cool. It even comes with a GPU sag bracket and you can adjust it to match the width of your GPU. That's pretty cool. Nice. All right, so before we put the motherboard inside the case, we gotta prep the socket for the AIO installation. This is something I'm really, really excited to check out ever since I got it in the last unboxing video. So this is the MSI MEG Core Liquid S360, and this is MSI's first ever AIO with an IPS display. That's right, guys, it's not an LCD display, it's the first ever 2.4 inch IPS display, and you can customize it to do some pretty cool stuff. You can have it show hardware information, like you can see on the box. You can have it show photos, uh, weather. You can even put custom GIFs or videos, which is pretty cool. Like you can play an actual MP4 video file on this display. I can't wait to check it out once it's fully installed. Damn, check out the size of this pump, you guys. That is massive. If you can look through here, you can kind of see a fan sitting on top of the pump. I'm guessing that's for the actual IPS display because these things can get pretty hot. So I'm guessing that's why it looks very bulky. Damn, that's a chonker. All right, so I noticed that the graphics card was actually sitting a little too close to the back side or back plate of the case and there wasn't enough clearance to pass through the cable. So I went ahead and moved the graphics card to the very first uh, PCI slot. This basically gave me an extra couple centimeters to work with in the back just so I can comfortably pass through the PCI cables. It's gonna be a pretty tight bend, but I think We'll make it work. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Look at that, guys. We have a beautiful arc towards the back and a straight path horizontally across the back into the, uh, the back side of the case. That is looking really clean. All right, let's talk about the AIO real quick, okay? So MSI includes Three really good looking and good performing all black non-RGB fans, which is perfect for the build, right? But the main problem is that they don't sell them separately. I looked everywhere on Newegg and Amazon. They are not for retail. Unfortunately, they only come if you buy the AIO. The problem with that is, you guys know me, I, I love to be, I love to stay consistent with my builds. I don't like mixing and matching different fans. I like to have the same exact fans in the entire system. It's one of my weaknesses. So because of that, unfortunately, I don't, or I can't use these fans. So I went on Amazon and I ordered nine of the new Noctua fans, which are coming in tomorrow. So I'll put three here for the AIO and then the rest will go inside the case to help with airflow. Um, so yeah, that is where we're at currently. So I thought in the meantime, I'm gonna try and get as much done inside the build until the fans get... <laughs> what you got there? Oh, wine. Special wine delivery. Oh, Yeah, I'm recording a video. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, no, it's okay. I guess we're gonna get drunk today, huh? Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna be installing the power supply and possibly even install the radiator as well. I don't think we need the fans to hook that up inside. So we're gonna get uh, most of it done today, actually. But for you guys, obviously, it'll just be one video. We'll be going with the dark power, to dark power, dude, I only had one sip. 
Dark Power Pro 12 from Be Quiet. This is, I've used this in a few builds before. This is definitely the sexiest power supply, sexiest black themed power supply in the market. And this is uh, Be Quiet's best power supply also. It's a shame we're not gonna really see it anyways because it's gonna go in the back of the case, but this is the fastest or most powerful power supply, I should say, that I do have. What am I even saying anymore? Jesus, by the end of this video, I'm gonna be like fumbling on my words. Maybe the wine was not a good idea. Ooh, that's some good stuff. That is some good stuff. We are not gonna install a hard drive, so we can remove. Oh my God, dude. This cup was about to fall down. Jesus, this is not a good idea. Do not mix wine with PC building, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and remove the hard drive cage. So another cool thing about this case is that you can actually install two power supplies in here. You can put the power supply either on the bottom over here, or you can remove this bracket and install it on the top, which is pretty cool. I don't know why anybody would want two power supplies inside of their system, but the option is there. I keep forgetting that this is normally a larger power supply um, than I use, and most of the time it doesn't even fit inside the case. So I hope, I hope that we don't run into any issues. Please, I don't want to swap power supplies again. Oh man, this is gonna be a tight fit. Can we do it? Come on, Evo, you're a champ. You're a champ, you can do it. Oh my God, that is a tight, but I think, I think we can do it. It's, a, it's gonna be a tight fit, but I think we can do it, you guys. We just might have to train a few cables, but I think, I think we're good to go. So obviously we do have some extra cable slack to work with. Um, I do remember ordering some extra length on these because I wasn't sure what case I was gonna be putting these in. But if I work on my cable management magic, I think we can tuck these in nicely behind the case. We do have a ton of extra space in the Evo, so that's good. We did also remove the hard drive cage, so that's extra space there to bundle up some of the cables too. So I'm not too worried about it. There we go. Guys, I figured it out. You remember this box I opened up in the last massive unboxing video? I got these two random things in here and I didn't know exactly what this was for until just now. Apparently these are the side plates for the AIO. This one kind of has a glossy finish on here, whereas this one is matte black. Can't really tell on camera, but this has more of like a matte black finish. So I think we can just swap these off since we are going with the matte black. Also, oh, these slide off, okay. Oh, that's cool. And then let's pop these bad boys in. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Have you guys noticed that even the mounting bracket and the thumb screws are all matte black? Good stuff, MSI. I feel like they're also kind of ditching the whole RGB craze and shifting over to neutral colors. All right guys, so I'm gonna vent just a little bit here. Um, so far the build looks incredible. I do have to get that out of the way, but whoever helped design this case didn't think too much about the upright GPU installation. So here's the PCI belt that I'm supposed to use, and this basically hooks up 
to the Gravis card and it goes across in the front into one of the PCI slots in the motherboard. Now obviously this is a white case so they sent over the white belt. I'm okay with that. But the issue with that is it's not gonna look that great. You're gonna have this nasty belt going across the motherboard and into one of the PCI slots. If I designed this case, I would have made the belt twice the size and I'll tell you why. How clean would it be if we could run the belt, let's say from the top PCI slot, straight down underneath the case, through the back, out from this grommet and into the graphics card. That would look so much cleaner instead of having this belt running across from the GPU to the motherboard, right? Like you guys have to kind of agree with me here. So yeah, this single belt here is actually gonna completely ruin the look I was going for. I did email Lee and Lee to at least send over a black one so the white one doesn't stick out as much, but I mean, even then, you're gonna have the belts going across the case. I wonder if you can attach two of these together. I'm gonna experiment with it. I don't know when they'll send over the belt, but I do wanna hook up two of these to make a very long PCI belt extension and see if that actually works. If it does, I'm gonna laugh. I'm actually gonna laugh really hard, but I'll try and run it through the back of the case and into the Gravis card. But if it doesn't work, then I'm just gonna leave it going across the front of the case. But yeah, that's what I would have done differently. You know, I feel like I need to remove the GPU first and then hook up the belt. That, that would make my life a lot easier. So let's try that. Okay, so now you have this stupid belt. I'm gonna try and make this part at least narrow so it's not as obvious. And then this plugs in like this. Like, come on, how is this even aesthetically pleasing? I get that you guys are trying new things, but this is certainly not the way. I mean, I'm sure the black one is not gonna stick out as much, but who, who approved this design? Lee and Lee, I know you guys are better than this, right? Is there an issue if you guys make this twice as long? Like, is that gonna affect performance or something? It's even blocking the 24 pin cable. All right guys, so I'm sorry to say I am not happy with this whatsoever. I'm not gonna rush this build out and get it out to you just to put out content. I, I wanna be happy with the build that I present to you guys. So I'm gonna look for an alternative PCI bracket, something that's PCI Gen 4 and something that's at least 500 millimeters so I can route it behind the case. So I'm gonna look around online, see what I can buy, and I'm just gonna wait for that before I can finish the build. I still have to wait for the fans to come in anyway, so I do have time. But yeah, I'm gonna leave this here and I'll see you guys, I guess, once I have the parts. All right, fans are officially here. Uh, I definitely think I went a little overboard on the fans. I don't think I'm gonna use all nine, to be honest. I will see, we'll see what happens. So I did pick up the new Noctua NF812 in black. I might go with the um, the white tip on the build, or should I just go all black? You know what, I just go all black, why not? These are really clean, you guys. I think I made a great choice going with these for the build. So if you guys go with the Chromax kit, you have the option of replacing the corner inserts on these fans. So by default, they come with this gunmetal gray, but you can swap them to any other color. Uh, these are, here are the extra ones over here. So, you know, you got red, green, blue, yellow, white, and then they even have a black one. So I will most likely go with this. And then you get this weird piece with it as well, which kind of looks like it connects all four of the corner pieces. I'm not sure exactly how it will look, on the fan. Let me let me put this on first actually just to see what it looks like. So yeah, here's what this looks like. I'm guessing the main difference between this and the corner pieces is that you get the anti-vibration support on all four sides compared to just the corners if you go with the individual corner pieces. So I think I'll just stick with this to be honest.
All right guys, so I have some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is I managed to find a 600 millimeter PCI Gen 4 riser cable from Thermaltake. The bad news is it's gonna take a full month to get here. I have no idea where it's getting shipped from, but obviously I can't wait a full month to finish the build. So um, I did place the order, but in the meantime, I did manage to find a PCI Gen 3 riser cable as well. This is the same exact one, 600 millimeters from Thermaltake, but it is PCI Gen 3. So obviously I'm gonna take a little bit of a performance hit, but at least you guys can see how the build will turn out once I do get that cable in. And I gotta say guys, this looks so much cleaner compared to before. So I basically managed to route the riser cable down and through the cutout of the case, across the power supply, and then out the grommet over here into the GPU. And I'm sure you guys can admit this does look a lot cleaner. I'm also glad I installed three more 120 millimeter fans in the front. I think the build looks more complete this way. Um, plus we have a ton of airflow going on. We got six total intake and then three exhaust on the top. But if you count the fans from the GPU as well, technically these are exhaust as well because it is pulling in air from the case and out the back. So, you know, we got six intake and six exhaust for some really nice neutral pressure. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. I do want to talk a little bit about thermals and take a closer look at this awesome IPS display. Uh, first off, I do wanna say I'm really happy with the old black build. There is not a single source of light in here, not even a single LED strip. And I just found out about this, but the GPU also has no light coming out of it. So I didn't have to change any settings inside the MSI center. I think the old black against the white turned out really, really clean. But let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section. So in terms of thermals, we're looking really, really good, you guys. CPU was peaking at 75 degrees Celsius during the Cinebench R20 benchmark. And then the Gravis card, I think peaked at 72. It was hovering around 70, 71 degrees for the most part, and it peaked at 72 a couple of times. So overall, really nice, cool temps inside the system, all while remaining very quiet. So this is what the PC sounds like on full load. I'm gonna remove the microphone from my shirt, put it right in front of the PC. So I do wanna take a moment to talk about this really cool IPS display from the AIO. As you can see, I uploaded a custom tech source GIF to demonstrate but what I was really impressed with was the user interface, which says a lot because MSI has arguably one of the worst software out there. So that's why I was pleasantly surprised on how easy it was to use. So basically you download MSI Center and you go into features and click on your AIO. Then you see a plethora of options down here. You could have the AIO display harder information and you could even customize what info to display up to five items. So let's say I wanna show the CPU frequency, temperature, and usage only. Then the AIO will cycle through all the info one by one. You could even choose a cool design for the background. If you go over to the video or image, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can choose from a few preloaded images or videos, but you can also upload your very own image or GIF. It even supports MP4 files, which is very cool. The banner section, I couldn't quite figure it out. Like, I know you can select a preloaded banner or upload your very own, but it's also supposed to show text. Whatever you type on here is supposed to display with the banner, but for some reason it doesn't show up here. The system clock is also self-explanatory. You can have the AIO show the time in different formats and designs, and then you have the live weather option. And apparently MSI thinks I live in Colombia for some reason, so I don't know how accurate this really is, but overall I really enjoyed playing with the AIO. All right, so final thoughts with the O11 Dynamic Evo. First and foremost, I think Lee and Lee hit another home run with the Evo. They took their, they somehow took their popular case and they made it better. I didn't even know that was possible. Um, this is like the peak of PC cases, if I'm being honest. Uh, lots of room for expandability, water cooling support. I do love the dual PSU support as well in the back and the fact that you can switch the IO port to you know different areas on the case. I think that's really cool. Um, the front mesh panel support, 
is also really nice. And you even have extra storage space on the bottom if you don't wanna put any fans. So a lot of thought was clearly put into this case. The only gripe I have is with the PCI riser cable, okay? But here's the thing guys, I'm not a PC manufacturer, I'm not a case manufacturer, so I can't sit here and, and blame Lee and Lee for that because maybe I don't have all the facts in front of me. I wanna believe that there has to be a reason why they didn't make the length 600 millimeters. Maybe it has something to do with performance loss if they double the length. I don't know what the reason is, but that is really the only issue I found with the case if you were to go with the GPU upright position. That's my only caveat with the case. At the same time, Thermaltake was able to make a PCI Gen 4 600 millimeter cable, so I'm curious how are they able to do it and not Lee and Lee. But anyways, aside from that, absolutely love the case. I wouldn't recommend it for an air-cooled build. I just feel like you're really not taking advantage of the case's features. Um, I would recommend it only for mid to high-end water cooling. With that said, I do want to revisit the case and do a really nice high-end water-cooled build. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do let me know what your thoughts are on the case and the build in the comment section below. Uh, I'll drop a link to all the parts used down below if you guys wanna check it out. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.